Okay. All right, so thank you all for being here. Um, I am Liz, I'm the community school coordinator at South Fork School. Um, we are here today to provide some information about the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, so we will be supported by our friends and colleagues from Jefferson Health. Um, and so at this time, I will uh, pass the mic over to our friends from Jefferson. Just a reminder before we start, we do have a term interpretation available in Spanish and Mandarin Chinese. Um, to join those channels, look for the globe at the bottom of your screen um, that says interpretation and um, join the appropriate channel. So with that, I will turn it over. Hi, I'll introduce myself first. My name is Paula Astra. I am the community ambassador lead for our mobile vaccine sites. Um, and so I today will present a little bit of uh, this ease of being able to schedule online through our portal. I can go next. Um, I'm Effie Kane. I'm one of the emergency physicians at Jefferson and also one of the physicians working with the mobile vaccine effort um, with Paula. And um, I'm really just here to give some background and some information about the vaccines in adults and in kids. Um, I've been working uh, in the ER with COVID patients pretty much from the beginning, as well as outside of the ER in nursing homes and other care settings, trying to contain outbreaks and help treat patients and get this thing under control. And then now have shifted my focus into vaccination efforts as sort of the next phase of the pandemic. Um, a little bit, I guess, about me. Um, I uh, was vaccinated. I got my first dose in December and I got my second dose in January. Um, I was a little bit, I was a little bit hesitant before that during the year uh, when the studies were ongoing and before they published their results and you'd hear all kinds of things. And um, it really was uh, a little scary to me how quickly things were developing and how fast they managed to get these vaccines ready for prime time. Um, and I was a little hesitant. Um, I had a lot of questions about whether they were gonna work, about whether there were gonna be side effects. Um, personally, as a, I'm 30 years old and I'm a woman and I don't have kids, so I was worried about having kids. Um, I really want kids. And I was worried about getting pregnant after getting vaccinated or getting pregnant and then getting vaccinated. I had a lot of concerns that I think are, are similar to what a lot of people, um, a lot of people my age and younger and older have. So um, ultimately what made me feel better was just reading the data. Um, they published, you know, so much information, this whole uh, approval process was actually handled really transparently and honestly and openly. Um, you know, they had the debate at the FDA televised and online for everyone to watch, all of the scientists discuss it. And they published hundreds of pages of all of their data from the trials. And I read all of it, so nobody else has to. <laughs> um, and it was very reassuring to me that they had really solid data that showed the vaccine worked really well and was very safe and wasn't going to cause any problems. And, um, you know, the numbers, the numbers don't lie. So I got comfortable and got convinced and I got my vaccines in December and January. And um, now a few months later, I am pregnant. So everything worked out exactly how I wanted it to. <laughs> um, now, um, you know, the vaccines now approved uh, with an emergency use authorization for children as young as 12. And I kind of went through the same phases of, well, you know, what's the data? What's the information? Is this going to work? Is it going to be safe? And then went through the same stage of reading all of the information and seeing that, yeah, the science is there. The numbers are there. Everything looks really solid and well done and honest and transparent. And so that makes me feel really comfortable recommending this for, for kids. Um, and uh, I have, you know, lots of data and lots of information and lots of numbers if anybody is interested in hearing them. But the, uh, the punchline is that the numbers really show really good safety and really good effectiveness for kids as young as 12. And I have no hesitation recommending the vaccine to everybody. Thanks. 
And my name is Mark Altschiller. I'm another, I'm a family doctor from Jefferson. And um, I see patients in a new health center right next door to the school. Uh, it's called the Vise Wellness Center. It's on 8th Street. Um, so you may have seen the signs outside. Um, we provide, we're going to be providing uh, care. We're hoping to provide care for the kids at Southwark since we're now open, as well as families. Um, we have the vaccines available in um, our office to make it easier for, um, you know, all of you on the call, but really for the, the children and their parents and their families and friends since we're right next door. And you can either make an appointment or you can walk in and we can go over some of those dates. Um, I got the vaccine myself and I have two teenagers who are 15 and 17. Um, they got the same vaccine that your children can get, which is the Pfizer vaccine. Um, my 17 year old Jacob, uh, with his first shot, um, he was fine. His arm hurt him for a couple hours, but that was it. For his second shot, he was just kind of tired for a day. He wanted to lie on the couch a little more and watch a little more TV, but he's a teenager, so that's not much different than what he normally does. My daughter, who's 15, she got her first shot a few weeks ago and had no, had no symptoms whatsoever, and she's getting her second shot today at 4.30. Um, and my wife got her shots and did okay. Um, I think this is a really great vaccine. I have taken care of a lot of patients with COVID um, in the office and in the hospital, and we've seen how sick it can make people. And, and now that the weather is great and we want all of our kids to be able to play outside, we want them to be able to, and we want you to all feel comfortable that they're gonna be safe and we wanna really try to help protect the kids. So we think this is a really great vaccine for them. Um, and I can tell you that as a parent, I would not have given it to my children if I was worried about it, um, but they've done fine. Um, so we, we wanted to be able to be here for you to answer any questions that you may have and see what we can do to um, answer those questions and just anything else to make it easier for you if you're interested in getting signed up. Thank you so much. Um, and so at this time, I was hoping maybe you all could provide a little bit of um, just general information about the vaccine, particularly um, what we know about its safety for 12 to 15, 12 to 17 year olds, um, since that's the newest um, group that's been approved to receive the vaccine. I can, I can give some numbers if you want. And actually, before you start, we do have a parent here. I'm not sure if they need interpretation or not. So I'm going to have Rodrigo jump in just to give in instructions in Spanish for how to join interpretation, just in case. Thank you. Hola, hola. Soy Rodrigo. Eh, soy el intérprete de español para, para hoy. No tengo muy claro si hay alguien que necesita interpretación, pero por si acaso lo voy a anunciar en español. La manera en la que usted se une al canal en este momento es hay interpretación hacia el eh, chino y hacia el español. Si usted quiere eh, escuchar la interpretación, la traducción en vivo de lo que se va diciendo, tiene que hacer lo siguiente. Usted tiene que ir a la parte de abajo de su pantalla, si está en una computadora, y tiene que buscar un globo terráqueo donde tiene que dar clic y luego seleccionar español. Si usted en lugar de una computadora está usando un teléfono o una tablet, que es eh, lo más habitual, tendría que ir a la parte de abajo de su pantalla de teléfono o tablet a la derecha. Va a haber un icono que son tres puntitos y que dice more o tal vez diga más si lo tiene traducido al español. Son tres puntitos. Le tiene que dar clic ahí. Tiene que escoger language interpretation o interpretación de idiomas. Tiene que escoger la opción de español y tiene que dar a confirmar o done o sí. De nuevo, si tiene una tablet o un teléfono, tiene que ir a la parte de abajo a la derecha donde ve tres puntitos. Tiene que dar clic donde dice eh, la interpretación de idiomas o language interpretation. Tiene que seleccionar español y dar a finalizar o done o listo. Gracias. Thank you, Rodney.
Okay. So I just want to provide a little bit of information about the trial for the Pfizer vaccine um, in children aged 12 to 15 years old, which are the most recent trial results that were published um, last month. So this was a trial that included 2,260 kids um, aged 12 to 15 and from a really um, broad spectrum of, uh, of races and, and also an equal number of boys and girls. So that lets us know that the results are gonna apply not just to one gender or ethnicity of kid, but it will apply to all kids as long as we get the same results in every group. So I thought that was really good. Um, they gave half of those 2,260 kids the vaccine and half of them got a placebo, which basically means an injection of nothing um, to compare the, and then they compared how many kids got COVID in the vaccine group and how many got COVID in the other group. So in the group that received the Pfizer vaccine, zero kids got COVID-19, none. In the group that didn't get the vaccine, 16 kids got COVID-19. Um, they also did blood tests on all of the kids in the trial who got the vaccine to test them for antibodies, which means evidence of immunity. And they compared those blood test results to the older kids in adults from the original Pfizer trial last year um, of people aged 16 to 25. They went up to that and they found that they had the same antibody levels and the same immune response. So that tells us that the vaccine is equally effective at creating that immune response in kids this age as it is in older kids and young adults. So we know that it works really well, right? Because there were no cases of COVID-19 in the group that got vaccinated. So it's 100% effective in that group, which is really great, um, even better than for adults. As far as safety, there were no serious um, side effects or bad outcomes in the trial in either group. Um, there were a couple of random hospitalizations for things like appendicitis in like one of the kids who didn't get the vaccine that were just sort of random stuff that happens to kids and has nothing to do with the vaccine. But there were no hospitalizations or bad um, outcomes re related to the vaccine in the trial at all. Um, most kids who got the vaccine did have some side effects. About 80% had some mild effects, including arm pain for a day or two after they got their shot or a fever or tiredness or a headache. Those were all the most common side effects. And they were a little bit more common after the second dose than after the first dose, but very similar. Around 80% of kids have some kind of reaction. Those are normal reactions. They're signs that the body's immune system is seeing the vaccine and reacting to it the way that it's supposed to. So it's actually a good thing. And they tend to go away after one or two days. Um, and then the kids bounce back and are totally fine, right? After just like Mark said, his kids had a similar reaction to that. So, um, so two big things, we know that the vaccine works really well based on the trial. And we know that the vaccine is really safe based on the trial because nothing bad happened to anybody. Um, the other question I think people ask a lot is, is it really necessary? Do we really need to vaccinate kids? Because you know kids don't get super sick from COVID. And for the most part, that can be true. Kids definitely get less sick from COVID than older adults do. But you know that's sort of a question of how, how sick is too sick. Um, so it's hard to get a really clear number, but our estimate is that there have been about one and a half million children in this age group infected with COVID since the pandemic started. And there have been around 500 children who have actually died from COVID-19 since this whole thing started. So to me, I mean, you know, we're talking about children, one death would be too many. 500 is way too many. So, and it's really hard to predict which kid will get really sick and which kid will just have a cold and be fine. 
So, you know, for me, the safest thing, right, is to prevent all of the kids from ever getting COVID-19 in the first place, since we can't predict who will get really sick and who won't. So it is true that kids don't get as sick with COVID for the most part, but they still definitely can get really, really sick or even die. So, you know, I think it's important to try and prevent kids from getting sick. And this vaccine, which was shown in the trial to be 100% effective and super safe, is absolutely the best way to do that. So I know that's a lot of information and I'm wondering if anyone on the, um, any of the parents or anyone else on the call has any questions about some of that information. I guess I was just wondering too, you know, if we don't know what long-term effects are of someone who gets COVID on the body, right? That's something that we would, you know, if we can protect you from getting COVID, then we're protecting you from any other, any anything that we're not aware of right now, right? Of the COVID uh, long-term effects, which is another reason why I felt really comfortable about giving it to my son because. I knew that there weren't long-term effects of the vaccine, but I wasn't sure about if he got COVID, what could happen. And I actually was one of those who did get um, side effects from my second vaccine where I did feel the lethargy. I did have some of the nausea and the chills and it did last for 48 hours. And I will tell you after 48 hours, I was done, right? And I knew that it was gonna go away. And while I felt terrible during that time, I also thought, well, if I got COVID and I felt this way for 10 days or so, boy, that would be really um, impactful in my life. And I, it, I just didn't want that to happen. So the 48 hours, I was like, okay. And then I also you know, felt like my, my immune system was working. It was kicking in and that's why I felt bad. And that made me feel really comfortable too, because it, um, it was like, okay, even though it was bad, I knew there was some good outcome coming from that. So yes, I was one who felt lousy for 48 hours. I was still able to go to work. I was still able to function and take care of my family, but I just didn't feel great. So I just wanted to share that as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point, um, Paula, about not knowing which kids are gonna have long-term symptoms and complications from COVID. Cause there was, there was actually a study in February that suggested as many as half of children who get COVID-19 could have persisting symptoms for months, um, which is sort of terrible when you're at that age and you, you, know, you just feel tired and short of breath for months and months and don't know when it will end. And I guess the freedom of the no mask, right? in some respects, you know, they've been wearing the mask for such a long time and it actually allowed my son to be able to feel comfortable without the mask in certain situations that we were in, so. Yeah. So does anyone have any questions about the vaccine or about the infection? I mean, I could start talk, I could show everybody um, just how to go about scheduling. Um, or the other thing I was thinking is if anybody knew anybody who did get COVID, maybe had any questions about their hospital stay or their treatment or anything about that, you know, we could surely answer those questions as well. So, and so Paula, people can either schedule it if they have access to a computer, they can either go online and you can show them. And then, and then if they didn't, they can just um, walk up to the health center, our health center to get it done as well, correct? Correct. Um, there also is a number that people can call to schedule that appointment, but it's not necessary. So walk-ups are fine. Um, we are having them 
on Wednesday from three to, what was it again? I'm sorry, what was it Wednesday? Three to six? Three to six. Three to six on Wednesday. On Monday, you could go from two to eight or Tuesday, you can go from two to eight. Monday and Tuesday, we will always be operating there. Wednesday was a special time that we were devoting for Southwick partner, uh, you know, parents, children, families, anybody that you wanted to refer to. So that would be your time alone um, to have. So I actually will send in the I just added the link to the online scheduling. Um, and now I could just go over what that would be like. Can, I guess I can just share my screen. Can I share my screen? Yes, I'll make you a co-host very quickly. Okay. And then when you're done, we can show a picture of the outside of the health center so people can be familiar with that as well. Okay. So this is the, are you guys seeing the desktop of Jefferson Health? Okay. Um, so as you scroll down, I mean, this talks about the different vaccines that we are offering. Um, and then as you go down further, you'll see the appointment schedule. So all you need to do is click here find the date that you wanna to go to get your schedule, to get your vaccine. So I'm just gonna pick Monday, June 7th. I'm gonna say I wanna go at 210. As you can see, if I hover over all these, the different times appear. So I'll say I wanna go at 210. I'm not a robot. The reason for vaccine, for my visit would be COVID vaccine. Um, I don't believe this is a hard stop and you can move on, but you surely add that. You hit continue. If you're not a Jefferson um, patient, you would move to continue as a guest. If you are a Jefferson patient, I recommend you going through my chart. If not, you will, we risk you opening up another chart. So you go in, you continue and you add your name. I'm just gonna make up a name and call myself test test. I'm a female, I'll give my date of birth. The social security number, if you don't know it or don't feel comfortable sharing it, you can put in three nines or all nines. Um, you add a phone number. Your address. If you have your insurance information, uh, feel free to add that information here. It is not mandatory either because the vaccines are free. You will not get billed for the vaccine. So it's not anything that needs to be added here. If you don't have your insurance information, you can go to not listed or no insurance. Um, at the sites, we also offer uh, support from a community health worker. So if you have any other social needs, you need to enroll in any benefits, you can seek help at that point when you go get vaccinated. Um, you hit someone else. Sorry, I think... Um, I 
think it's just not taking the test test information properly. And it might realize I'm a fake patient, but that's basically what you need to do. Um, and if, once again, you don't have to add your insurance or your social security number. Oh, that's wrong. Oh, there you go. I had the wrong zip code. And there you go. There, there's your appointment. So does anybody have any questions about the ease of that? <laughs> no, that was really helpful. Thank you, Paula. Um, and so that is the option to register for an appointment online. Um, as has already been mentioned, you can also walk up to the wellness center. Um, so I'm actually going to share my screen now. Um, we're going to take a little journey. So if you're in our back schoolyard, so we're standing here at the corner of 8th and Mifflin, right? This is our schoolyard. We're going to turn and we're going to keep going down 8th Street. Just a little bit more. Ooh, a little bit too much. <laughs> We'll go back. All right, you can't see it um, because it is not here in this photo, but the wellness center is right here on 8th Street. Um, so I'll show you a picture of the front door. This is what you'll see when you stop by. So I'll pass it over to you, Dr. Mark, if you would like to talk a little bit more about the clinic, the wellness center and the team. Sure. So. Um... This is on 8th Street, and this is an office that's open um, Monday through Friday, all day, and we can take care of people, we can take care of adults, we can take care of children, we can take care of pregnancies, we can do um, anything that you really need. It doesn't matter if you have insurance or not. If you have insurance, we will take your insurance, and if you don't have insurance, um, we can work with you. There's a, a copay um, based on your income, usually it's $25 for a doctor's visit, and that would include all of your laboratory tests for free. Um, but you can stop by just to talk to us. We have social workers who can meet with you to help out um, for, uh, to seeing if you are eligible for insurance. And when you, if you just wanna come for the vaccine or you just wanna come to look at the space, you can stop by. But if you want to come for the vaccine, you can just come on Monday or Tuesday, every Monday or Tuesday. But this week, we're also doing Wednesday for the South Park families. Um, so that's our center. And then there's three, of, there's three different uh, doctors there. So um, the person on the left is Dr. Jessica Deffler. And then you can see me. And then uh, Chris um, Aviso is our nurse practitioner. So we're there every day. And we can help take care of you or answer your questions if you need. Um, so that's really our presentation today. Um, does anyone on the call have any questions about anything or anything that we didn't get to answer for you? All right, it seems like we're good to go. So thank you so much, um, Paula and Ifra and Mark for this presentation. Um, this was very informative. Um, we will be making this recording available to families uh, so they can watch on their own time. Um, and again, we hope to see you next week, Monday or Tuesday, two to eight, or I will be there on Wednesday. Some other Southwark staff members might be there on Wednesday, but we will be there from three to six next Wednesday. We hope to see you there for your COVID vaccine for yourself or for your child. And please remember children um, under the age of 18, their parent must accompany them to get their vaccine. Um, so if you have a child under the age of 18, please come with your child to get their vaccine. Thank you again, and we hopefully will see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.